Thank you again, everyone, for your patience. Welcome to today's webinar, Reality Therapy with Dr. Robert Wumbledon. My name is Julie Uribe, and from all of us here at Walden, we thank you for taking the time you out of your evening to join us for our first event in our Theories Learning Community Series. I'd first like to go over some questions quick housekeeping items. So this event will be recorded and archived. So you will have an opportunity to view the presentation again or even share it with a friend or a colleague. So as we noted in the pop-up message on your screen or if you're on the phone, an audio message, by continuing to remain in the meeting, you are consenting to be recorded. The presenter, um, which I guess is just the moderator and the role play participants um, will be spotlighted on your screen throughout the session. We ask that all participants remain muted unless you're directly addressed to ask a question or respond to a prompt and you're welcome to leave your cameras on if desired, but it's not necessary. So on the screen in front of you, you'll see the main presentation window. Uh, captioning is provided for this event and you should be able to see active captioning on the bottom or top of your screen. There's also an option to uh, view a full transcript if desired. And to submit questions for our presenter, please use the chat box and we will relay those questions. So with those items out of the way, it's my pleasure to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Robert Wobbledang. Dr. Wobbledang is internationally known for his work, including teaching, publishing, and practicing choice theory and reality therapy. He also developed the WDEP system, a well-known pedagogical tool widely utilized in reality therapy. Dr. Wobbledang is the director of the Center for Reality Therapy and Professor Emeritus at Xavier University. He was appointed by Dr. William Glasser as the first director of training at the William Glasser Institute, a position he held from 1988 to 2011. We are extremely grateful and honored to have him with us this evening. And with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Wobbledang to share a little bit more about his numerous accolades and to start the presentation this evening. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, Nicole, and I appreciate uh, this opportunity to talk to everybody at Walden, and I um, regret not being uh, able to do this on Zoom. Uh, uh, my computer was working, but uh, all we're getting is no internet now, so but I, as I said before, we're, somehow I will muddle through. And don't we do that in counseling a lot? We kind of muddle through. And uh, that's, that's just what we do as professional people. We, and, and I think sometimes we feel inadequate to deal with what we're faced with. Uh, and I always say this, one of the reasons we feel inadequate with our clients is that we are inadequate. Who is adequate to face everything that we have to face? Nobody is. So don't worry about that as you begin your career or continue your career as a counselor, I, I say don't worry, but what I mean is, is it's something we have to cope with because there are times when we go home and we kind of wonder if we did anything uh, today worthwhile. And I say, you did something worthwhile, even if you may feel that you didn't. And I, and, and I know, have no doubt that as you enter the profession, uh, at times you kind of feel like, what's the use? And uh, I'm, I'm saying here, you, you might feel that way, but you might also feel very idealistic, like you're going to change the world. And I say this, keep that idealism because you will change the world. If you help one person break that cycle of poverty, of bigotry, of, of feelings of being put upon, oppression, whatever the current words are, uh, the, the, that uh, if you help one person cope with that, or you intervene outside of counseling and help to, to fix the systemic issue that they may be facing, if you help one person, you're helping who knows how many, because they will help their children and they will help the people that they meet. And this will cascade down through history. So you will change the world, but you may not see it. It's kind of like making an act of faith in something that's unseen, the change and the good that you do. And for many clients you have, you are their best hope, even if they sometimes resist and fight you off and everything like that. So uh, who else do they have if they don't have you? 
All right. So uh, having said that, uh, I'd like to just give a couple general ideas about uh, reality therapy. Uh, I want to say this, that reality therapy is a mental health system. It's a mental health system, not a mental disorder system. You can't possibly deal with every mental disorder as it's written in the DSM, uh, but you deal with mental health. So I encourage you use the ideas and help people think about and talk about what they do when they are healthy, not just what they do when they're not healthy. And by, by healthy, I mean live within the law, live within the, the, what most people think is sanity. <laughs> Sometimes it's questionable, but, but uh, at any rate, helping people get along better. Let's just put it that way. I think we would all agree that that's a characteristic of good health is getting along with people and uh, living a productive life. That's one of the things we do in recovery we, is we help people live a productive life as they go through the stages of recovery. So uh, at first, it, 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 you, you backtrack on that, but that's where we aim, at, aim to go is to, to help them live a productive life, which means perhaps a job, perhaps uh, better relationships and so on. So anyway, uh, it's a mental health system. So talk to the sane, healthy part of the person. And that brings me to the second uh, word of, that I want to say by way of introduction, and that is that sometimes the solution seems to be disconnected with the problem. In other words, and they may even say, how come you didn't talk about my, my this or my that? And you say, and the answer is, I did talk about it, but I talked about an alternative to it. And so, uh, like with a depressed person, uh, I ask them, when was the last time you had a really good belly laugh? When did when is the last time you enjoyed life? And uh, that may not seem at, at first to have anything to do with being depressed, but it has everything to do with it, because it is the opposite of that presenting issue. So. Uh, that, that's uh, what I mean by sometimes the problem seems to have nothing to do with the solution. And I'll explain that a little bit more in a moment. So those are some things. Oh, another uh, word by way of introduction is that uh, you may have read uh, that Glasser doesn't like uh, drugs and doesn't prescribe drugs and all that. Well, that's, you know, he that, that's that's him. Uh, you have to distinguish between the person and the system. Now he would say things kind of radically at times he, when he was alive. Of course, he doesn't say them now that we know of. But but he would say some some things that people didn't like to hear. And I say that's that's his opinion. And and uh, he had opinions that I don't agree with. And yet uh, yet I'm pretty committed to this system. So uh, th I think that's important. We in the real world have to deal with people and we, it is standard practice to refer them for medication if you think they need it. So that's, that's just the way we live. And the second thing <clears throat> is that um, it is quite uh, congruent, the system is quite congruent with the need to provide a diagnosis. And so we do that. If you look through the DSM, which I have right here in front of me, I just keep it. I was gonna, I was gonna look up a few things and refer to it. But let's take trauma. Uh, trauma. Okay. If you look down the list of the identifying characteristics of trauma, they're almost all related to something that's current and related to the relationships. And that's what we say in reality therapy, that relation, human relationships are central, central to rehabilitation, to healthy living. So uh, I just want to say that if you have to provide a diagnosis, we do, you do it. I mean, it's that simple. So um, <clears throat> we don't, we don't spend a lot of time on it with the person. We don't, you know, it's, there's always this thing about labeling people and, if you want to get a, a diagnosis of schizophrenia, how are you going to get rid of that? There's a very good article, I, which I just received today uh, in Counseling Today by Tina Loth. You probably know her. I don't think I have met her, but I might have. 
And she's, guess what, where she is? She is, as it says here, a core faculty member with Walden University. So I don't know, maybe she's even listening to this. But uh, anyway, it's a very good article about the stigma of mental illness. So uh, we're not, reality therapy is not too big on that either. But a person comes and says, I'm schizophrenic. And I always say, yes, okay, I understand that. But what else do you do besides uh, have schizophrenia? I think maybe you probably do other things. And and you build that up. And that's very congruent with the mental health, I mean, with the neuroscience, because you're helping them make different connections in their brain. You're helping them make diff- form different pathways than the ones they've had. So it's very, very biological as well as psychological. So anyway, uh, just those words of wisdom <laughs> by way of introduction. And, and another, uh, one more thing, uh, as I always say, take what is useful, leave aside what is not useful from what you hear. If you hear something you don't like, don't use it. I mean, this is not revealed from on high. These are ideas developed by human beings and and uh, no one is, is going to be, I, I, there's no theory that covers everything. I mean, I think choice theory and reality therapy is pretty close, but you would expect me to say that. But but uh, if you don't think it is, then maybe it isn't for you. So take what is useful, leave aside what's not useful. And uh, <clears throat> I just think that's important with any theory, with any system. Okay. Now, what I'd like to just summarize a couple of points about reality therapy and then uh, do the um, demonstration. So anyway, the background and the theoretical basis for reality therapy is called choice theory. You probably studied this in your classes, but I'd, I give a little different twist to it. And I've also added a few things. So the, the, what motivates us are what glass are called genetic instructions. They're, they're born in us. Now we can't prove that. We have no absolute proof of that. But we can say that we, the, it seems that we are motivated. Maybe not explicitly, but this is what drives our behavior. One is a need for survival. <clears throat> and, or I like to call it self-preservation. People will do all kinds of things to, to maintain their lives. And um, for example, I used to work at a halfway house for women ex-offenders. These are women who had been in, at the state reformatory. Some had been in the federal prison, and uh, they were in, you know, diagnosed with a lot of different, un, you know, really awful things. And and they were were residents of the halfway house. And so um, we would try to talk to them about what else do they do. One thing is get, try to get, help them get a job. One is to help them have uh, better relationships with people, but they would generate all kinds of behaviors that were self-preserving and uh, aimed at survival. Um, and um, they would be different than mine, <clears throat> but uh, they would they would have many that are the same. Because, for example, <clears throat> our behavior, I mean, our body will generate survival behavior that circulates the blood to digest the food. It helps us breathe. All of these things are survival or self-preservation behaviors. So, but we don't deal a great deal with that in, in our work, but we do with some more and more perhaps than ever before. But we, we uh, depends where you work. And so um, the, the, the second drive or motivator is belonging or connectedness with other people. And you can kind of use these needs we call a more genetic instructions. You can use them as a diagnostic schema. You can go down the line and you can, you can um, <clears throat> just kind of assess how are they doing with their belonging. They're their belonging with their family. They're belonging with friends, belonging with uh, on a job if they have a job. You know, most people get fired from a job. People who do get fired from a job get fired not because they can't do the job but because they can't get along with people. And that expresses itself in a wide range of, of ways. Uh, I've done enough work in companies to know and to observe and to come to the conclusion that I am astounded at how long the, the, the company will keep a person and, um, 
on the job if they're honest, if they show up on time, and if they get along with people. And, and even if they're not most efficient or effective, they, you know, they can teach them technical skills. At least it's easier to teach that than it is to teach them to get along because sometimes the employer is not trained to teach. That's our job is to help people get along with each other. Anyway, belonging. So there's family belonging, work belonging. And by work, I mean anything they do that helps them uh, get along. And it, they, they may be homeless, but they're still they still work and they're not, they're, they're not make, making money, but they're still doing things to, to try to make it in this life. Um, so anyway, you got the idea. Uh, and, and oh, the third kind of belonging, there's family belonging, there's work belonging, and there's friendship belonging. So uh, one of the questions we ask the person in reality therapy is, do you have somebody who's important to you in your life? Do you have a person that, that, that you uh, would like to get along with better. <clears throat> so, um, uh, many years ago, there was a mental hospital in, um, in, in Michigan. Uh, it was called Ypsilanti, the city was called Ypsilanti. And during the, during the COVID, I finally read the book about that place. It's called The Three Christs of Ypsilanti. <laughs> a wonderful book there was a movie about it too but this therapist um, worked with these three guys who thought they were christ and um so so uh, but but he tried to help them get connected with each other i think in reality therapy we would we would do that a little bit more explicitly when we talk about the same things that they did and not just the uh diagnosis but 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 it's a wonderful book and he did a lot of good with these two three guys Okay, so um, at any rate, uh, belonging to uh, the third need is the need for inner control or power. I like the phrase inner control because it, that's, that explains power. Power is kind of has a bad reputation these days, or for a, long, a lot of times it had a bad reputation. And so um, <clears throat> at any rate, it means, it means being good at something. It means being satisfied with what you do. Uh, you feel in control. If you go to the physician and the doctor says you're in excellent health, don't come back for a year. You're gonna. You, you say, well, you walk out of there and you feel good because you feel in control. So uh, that's the idea. When you drive your car and you get home safe, you feel in control. So it, it could be that. It could be running for political office and uh, winning. Then you feel this exhilaration of of winning. So. It has a lot of different aspects to it. It comes from the French word "power." Does the the uh, to, to be to be good at something, to be able. My wife is right here, and she tells me about French. Say that again. Pouvoir. P. Okay. Pouvoir. She taught French, but she didn't teach me any words except a few off-color phrases. Okay. Okay. So. At any rate, uh, just kidding. So, so uh, the third, the next need is a need for freedom or independence to make choices. So you can kind of use this language with people that what choices have you been making that's been satisfying to you? And there's an implicit and kind of a meta communication that occurs. And I don't mean to overdo the jargon, but but there's a kind of a message that you're that you're sending to people, which is that you have choices, that you're not victimized, you're not uh, downtrodden. You do have choices no matter what. And I encourage you, if you have never read the book uh, *Man's Search for Meaning* by Viktor Frankl, read that book before you die. It is a marvelous book written by a marvelous man who was a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp for three years, Auschwitz. And he said that, that no matter what he endured, he had choices. And his choice was how to see this, how to, how to see this diabolical world in which he lived and he saw it as having meaning and purpose. Okay, and that was a choice. So f freedom or independence, and then finally, fun. Fun or enjoyment is another motivator. Uh, we like to have fun. You know, the old saying, all work and no play makes a dull day. So um, unless you're a counselor, then it makes a very fascinating day because you're dealing with people. 
intimately. You're really dealing with their inner soul, their inner heart, their inner goals, their dreams, their pains. And so uh, anyway, that's, that's the idea of, of the needs. Now, those are the five needs that Glass are formulated and which most people who study and teach reality therapy use. But I've added another one. And I think this is true because we say in reality therapy, we can only generate behaviors with a purpose. All behavior has a purpose, very similar to the Adlerians. And um, <clears throat> so, so uh, purpose or meaning. And um, so if you think about that, we must have a need for purpose and meaning, it seems to me. And uh, so I encourage you to, to uh, think about that. Now you have a chart, I believe. Nicole, do they have a chart there? Yes, yes, everyone looks yeah. at the material. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's on the right side of that chart, uh, uh, choice series, are, are these are listed. These needs are listed. So uh, I just added a few things to them. So, and, and uh, we could go into more detail, but I don't want to go into the rest of that chart except uh, to note that the, the behavior has arrows that reach out to the outside world, and those arrows indicate uh, that that behavior has a purpose. So maybe we, maybe we uh, have a need for purpose, okay? So in fact, Viktor Frankl said it's the most basic human need that we have, but it's not part of what Glass formulated. <clears throat> okay, so that's the theory. That's, that's a, well, that's a part of the theory. It's the justification for what you do in reality therapy, which is what I'm going to talk about now. So uh, at, at any rate, there you might just, if you don't learn, learn anything, keep those in mind and use them. Ask people about them. Ask what choices they're making. Ask when the last time was they had fun. What did they, they do lately that they really felt good about? And especially those very disturbed persons or the, 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 the substance abusing person. When was the last time you... You had fun without you without you know taking drugs without abusing drugs or without doing anything dishonest or whatever it may be, uh, and uh, uh, so th this also answers. I better say this while I think of it. That this also answers an objection that people have to counselors. Like for example, when I worked at the halfway house for women, they would ask me. How are you going to help me if you've never been in prison? Now, you can kind of get defensive about that. Or how can you help me uh, if, well, how can you help me if you're not of the same race as I am? And they would say, yeah, what, are you, what are you, how are you going to help me? I'm a black woman, you're a white male. How are you going to help me? And, and, I, and you can kind of get defensive and, and, and the conventional thing is, well, teach me about your culture and all that. And I, I say this, I say, look, I know nothing about your race. I know nothing about what it's like to be a, a, a black woman or a Hispanic woman or a Muslim woman or whatever the person is. I know, I know, I know a thing about that. But what I do know is how to help you get along with people. And what I do know is to, how to help you get a job and keep it. And uh, so uh, and how to how to talk to your kids uh, and how to get your kids back when if they've been taken away from you. So those are some things I know about. And that's very empowering to the person. And it, it establishes trust. So it's a paradox when you put some distance between you and that person, you actually end up connecting, connecting with them. They would they would say to me and this you're, you'll hear this. How do you how can you help me if you've never been in prison? And my response was, that's exactly why I can help you. I am an expert at staying out of prison. I know how to do that. My job is not to help you go back to prison. My job is not to help you, um, you know, fall off the wagon if you're recovering. My job is to help you stay on the wagon, and that's what I know how to do. So anyway, those are just suggestions and that will apply, I guess, to any kind of counseling. Anyway, uh, now. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have a question about the theory? I'm only going to give you a couple of seconds to indicate that. We don't have any questions just yet. 
<laughs> okay. All right. So let's go on to the how to. That's because that's really what you're probably interested in. Now you have a chart about that too. It's called the cycle of counseling. Everybody has that. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, yeah. Okay. So what I've done with that chart is try to formulate I, the 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 um, um, procedures in ways that you can remember them. Because if it's worth, you know, with 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 REBT, that, that article that Tina Lote wrote uh, was. REBT, they have the ABCs, which helps you remember it. Um, uh, multimodal therapy had the um, uh, basic ID, uh, which which helps you remember the ideas that that uh, Arnold Lazarus taught. Uh, and motivational interviewing has gazillions of of uh, 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 of acronyms that help you remember the concepts. And this fits with, I encourage you to get a book by Barbara Oakley. It's called How to, How to Learn Calculus Without Learning Math or something like that. It, yeah, I forget the exact title of it, but it's, it's, a, it, it's not just about learning calculus. It's not just about learning math. It's about how it's about learning. And she says in there, we learn in chunks. We learn in chunks. And I've tried to to, to put that into these WDEP, the W stands for a chunk of ideas, asking what do you want, asking what you want to have happen. What do you want from yourself? What do you want from your family? What do you want from this, this counseling? I mean, that's a really good question. Uh, the way you can ask it is what would you like to have happen well, after, we do, after we're done talking? What do you want to have happen while we are talking? So there's lots of different interventions that you can make based on on the w where do you, and my favorite is where do you see your control inside or outside now, and and now we're taught in our counseling these days that about people who don't have we i think we almost encourage people to think they don't have control and i don't know how you help people if they don't have any uh don't sense that they have any control in their life uh if they see themselves as victims they're more likely to be victims. So I would suggest you discourage people from seeing themselves as victims, but seeing themselves as possibly successful in what they want to do. And that's a kind of a controversial concept. So if you don't like it, don't don't worry about it. I mean, just forget it. But anyway, um, so so uh, where do you see your control? And a good question, especially with an adolescent, is. How much of all this trouble are you bringing on yourself? I love that question because they'll say, oh, not I'd say, well, would you be willing to take a little bit of credit for what you're doing? I mean, uh, and what, what percentage? Try to get it to, into concrete numbers. What percentage are you causing this yourself? What percentage of the pain? Now, you can't use that indiscriminately with somebody who's you know, got cancer and everything. You don't ask them how much you, you are you causing. Of course not. But but you 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 you, you use different parts of the system with different people. And my suggestion to you is um, <clears throat> is to take what what you can from here and, and apply it. Let me give you an example. I do some work currently with a group called Compassionate Friends. These are people who have lost a child. And I meet with them, and um, they're very suspicious of, of professional people. But they invite me about twice a year to meet with them, and I, because I don't, I, I mean, I learn from them, and then I feed it back to them, and and I learn what to say and what not to say. They'll tell you what to say, and they'll tell you what, what not to say. But this is the one place where they can come and talk about their child. Nobody else wants to hear it. Everybody else tells you, oh, it's time to move on. Time to move on, and uh, they don't want to hear that. <clears throat> so um, I, I suggested, that, and I've learned this: to, to when somebody in counseling, somebody who's grieving about the death of someone, I encourage them to talk about the dead person. Tell me about her or him. What what, is it, what were they like, and what did you do together? That people like to talk about that, and if they don't, they'll they'll indicate that, of course. Um, but anyway. Uh, the, the D is the doing, the present. Stay in the present as much as possible. And that doesn't mean you ignore the past. 
there's a there's an I think people with teach reality therapy sometimes overdo this thing about the present. They they might say, for example, I'm not we're not going to talk about that. Well, that's that's in the past. That abuse is in the past. We're not going to talk about. It. I mean that. I don't like that. I I suggest to them, if you want to tell me what happened, I'll listen. And uh, just and, and you try to understand and just empathize, and then you can gradually say, for example, that that event that happened and, and that explosion when you were in Iraq, you know, and it's still on your mind. What is it stopping you from doing now? And they'll say, well, I, I have nightmares, or I have flashbacks, or I have anger fits, and things like that. And uh, okay, well, just that and, and encourage it. This is a normal reaction to this horrible event that you had in your life and uh, how could you how could you not be affected by that i know you'd like to not i know you want to forget about it but i mean i just let's, let's talk about if you want to tell me about what happened tell me but let's also talk about your life now and what you can do differently so uh, that's the D, and an, an example. The E is self-evaluation. That means what is what you're doing helping? Is what you're doing working for? What was that? Anybody hear that? Okay, maybe it was just on my end, a little beep. But uh, is what you're doing working for you? Is it helping you? Is it getting you where you want? And one of the 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 reasons for asking this is that as human beings, we have what I like to call a relentless, undying belief in things that don't work. If it doesn't work, do it again. Do it more. If yelling at the kids didn't work yesterday, do it today. Only do it louder. And and we do this because we're human beings. I'm not criticizing such people. I'm I'm saying you know I I. I slip into this myself, so and I even know the stuff. <laughs> so um, why do we do this? Because we're human beings, and I don't, I don't want to get psychological about it. Just that's, that's a good enough explanation why we do things, uh, why we do these things. But it seems satisfying to those needs in one way or another. To get a little bit more specific, um, <clears throat> but but uh, ask the person to evaluate. And that is the key. I wrote a book called Reality Therapy and Self-Evaluation. I usually hold it up when I do these presentations, but I could hold it up now, but you wouldn't see it. But I encourage you to get it tonight. You can get it on Amazon. And um, it's, it's, a, it's the most comprehensive and most up-to-date. There's chapters on all kinds of things, cross-cultural counseling, uh, trauma, all kinds of things. Uh, school examples, etc. Okay, so um, anyway, um, and then finally the plan of action. Plan of action. So W, what do you want? And all those subdivisions of that D. What is? What are you doing? What are you thinking? What what the thoughts go through your mind? <clears throat> e is self evaluation, and P is the plan of action. So. There's a saying, to fail to plan is the plan to fail. So, and, and you know how important uh, treatment planning is, and we're, we're required to come up with a treatment plan most of the time. So, uh, and you can come up with specific plans related to belonging, related to, to um, <clears throat> achievement or inner control, fun, and, and so on. And if you have a little paragraph in your in your notes and your chart about um, why you're doing it this way. You just have a little summary of reality therapy beforehand and you turn that into an insurance company. There, there are people, uh, I, I, I can't say for sure, but they're more likely to, to get to cover you. So at any rate, I, I can't say for sure, but, but um, anyway, those are some ideas around the uh, delivery system. So Glasser described the distinction between choice theory and reality therapy by saying choice theory is the train track. It's the, it, 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 it gives direction. It, it points the way. And reality therapy is the train. You need both. You, if you're going to, the thing's going to work, 
I mean, you need a, a track and you need a vehicle to deliver the product. So that's that's a, a good way to look at theory and practice. Now, I, there are people who say they do choice theory. I I don't get that, and I don't I don't like it, but. <laughs> mainly because it seems to me we need a, a, a distinction between the two. But anyway, whatever, however you want to put it, it's okay. All right. So there might be a question or two. Does anybody have a question? There are a couple of questions. I think they're more clarifying questions. So the first one is, does it sound like helping people to see their current reality and empowering them to change their reality to what would be ideal for them? Is that an accurate assessment? Oh, wait a minute, I didn't quite get that. You're kind of loud. Your voice is very loud and I can't, I'm trying to turn it down a little bit. <laughs> okay, okay. It, says, okay. it says, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine now. Okay, it says, does it sound like helping people to see their current reality and empowering them to change their reality to what would be ideal for them? I guess that's a just a clarifying. Are you asking question. me? Is that a script? A good description? Is that what you're asking? I believe so. I believe that's the question. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah, you could put it that way. Uh, I would say you the the thing. I would change it a little bit, but it's just the way I would change it. It's not necessarily the only way to say it, but I would say looking at their behavior and and changing their behavior to match what they want. But it's okay the way the way she he or she said that. Okay, any other questions? Okay, perfect. The, the second question was very much what you just said, so it was more of a another clarifying question. Reality therapy is just giving concrete answers on the reality of one's current situation and where they want to go. Yeah, and, and it's more than giving answers; it's asking them questions and have, having them come up with the answers. But with the right questions, uh, you, you can you can. Uh, come up with it you know the quest, quest skillful questioning is the royal road to change yeah, it's a good I, I, that's not my original point i think i heard that from mike and baum he said the royal road to change is is well selected questions and we do ask questions in this system it's, it's a little different than conventional on person-centered counseling, but I, I encourage you to use person-centered counseling, not to not to abandon it. So uh, this is not our way to throw out everything you learned. Okay, any other questions? Yes. The next question is, how much do you challenge clients who victimize themselves or don't take accountability? Oh, I think you challenge them, but you don't yell at them. I mean, Maybe that that might lead to a good to a role play. Uh, such a person, if, you, if somebody wants to role play such a person, somebody something like that, I can ask, I can answer better uh, concretely than I can abstractly. Um, that I, that would be but, great. We do have a role play participant if you want to. Well, why don't we do that right away? Because we have about uh, forty minutes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So we okay. have our participant, Ebony. Okay. Ebony. Hello. Hello. I am here. Hello. Hello. Okay. Good. I can hear you very well. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Now give me some background, like uh, how old are you going to be? And, and, uh, I assume you I mean, tell me about what's your gender. <laughs> Nowadays we ask that. All right. I Are you am, gonna be a, you're gonna be a female. I am I am gonna be a female. Uh okay. I am forty three and um what kind of setting are we do you wanna be in? A mental health setting of some kind? Sure. Mental health okay. setting um, coming in because I have trouble at work. I don't get along with okay. people. I don't like people. Okay, okay, that's good. Now, and I, I mean, this is a role play. This is not really you, okay? Right. Uh, okay, so this is purely hypothetical. Now, now one thing, I'm gonna have to set my phone down so I, as I talk with my hands, <laughs> even though you can't see it. 
Um, okay, can you hear me okay now? Yes. Okay. Uh, if you can't, just tell me and I'll, I'll talk louder. Uh, but uh, so uh, we, let's say we've gone through all the ethical uh, ideas, the, the um, informed consent. So I don't want to review that because it's the same in any counseling. It's important. So I don't want to imply that it's not important. It's really crucial to our work. But at the same time, let's just say we went through all that. And otherwise, I'd be talking about that the whole time and not about your problems or your issues. So that, all right. So let's say we've been through a duty to warn and, and then informed consent and limitations of confidence. Yeah, the whole business. Okay, so well, well Ebony uh, walked in here today, and um, I'm just kind of wondering what thoughts went through your mind as you walked in. That I don't want to be here. They okay. they're making me come. I see. I see. Okay, so well, I guess the first question I have is, who are they? Uh, my job my managers pulled me in and said, I'm going to have to come to see someone okay. because I don't get along with the right. people. Oh, they, they said you don't get along with people. Okay. Do you agree with that? No, I'm wonderful. Everybody loves me. They love you. Yeah. But the boss, the boss thinks they don't, huh? Yeah. He's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the way it is with bosses, isn't it? Yeah. Trouble with bosses. The trouble with bosses is that they're the boss. And um, so, well, how does what does he think you? Is it a he or a she? Your boss? It's a he. A he. What What does he base that on? That he says you don't get along with people. What What does he say you do, or or the other people do? That I don't work well with others. Um, when we're given like group tasks to do, I just do my own thing because people don't do what they're supposed to do. So I just do whatever I want to do. I, I get it done. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you this, Ebony. This is a really important question. Um, is is the way you're working, uh, which I don't doubt is, I think I'm sure it's good, but. It, I'm, more, I'm just wondering, <laughs> is the way you're going now, is that helping you keep your job or is it standing in the way of your employment? Well, I guess I stand in the way of my employment because I got angry that I didn't get promoted. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. yeah. So um, <clears throat> you thought, how long have you worked at this job? Three years. How many years? Three. Three. Okay, I didn't catch that. Three years. So you've been around a while. You're a veteran, and you felt you should be promoted to, to like a supervisor or what? Yes, managing okay. director. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, so this is causing you some uh, frustration, I imagine, huh? Yeah, they promoted someone who was green that I trained, and it should have been me. Oh, boy. Yeah. So that makes it worse. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, wow. You know, I think I could help you with this. Are you going to make them and promote me? Oh, boy, I wish I could. Oh. But, you know, what do you want me to do? Call them up and tell them to promote you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to call. That's why I came, so you can call and give them the word to tell them to promote me. Well, I usually don't do that. Um, but I tell you what, I'd like to talk to you about something similar to this, but it's a little bit different. And that is this. I think you came to the right place because the way I see it, Ebony, just, just from our brief conversation is that it's like you're standing at a fork in the road and you have a choice now. 
You can go down Happiness Highway, or you could go down Misery Boulevard. One, you make yourself happy or happier. And the other, you make yourself more miserable than you are now. And I wanted to ask you, which one do you think you're headed down? Well, I thought I was headed down happiness, but apparently they think otherwise. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. The boss says, boss is unhappy with the way you're doing things, I guess, at least some of the things. Would that be accurate? Yes. I mean, they don't send their employees to counseling for because they're they're doing everything perfectly in their I mean in the boss's mind. Yeah, because in my head I'm doing it perfectly. I'm you know, it's yeah. me. I'm perfect. Yeah, yeah. You're perfect? Well, most of the time. I have a few slip ups every now and again. Yeah, okay. But the boss thinks you need to to do something different, something uh uh, what's the word? Something better in his or in his mind than what you're doing now. Is that right? Yeah, but again, he's stupid, so we can't just go with what he says. Have you told him that? Uh, I almost did, but I I, I like getting paid um, on Friday, so I didn't tell him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not a good idea usually to tell the boss that he's stupid. I'm close probably, though. Pardon me? I'm kind of close to telling him he's stupid. We'll see yeah, how this turns yeah. out today and I'll let him know. Well, if you tell him he's stupid, we'll be talking about where you, where you go from here for a different job because I have a hunch he's going to show you the door. Uh, that might be true too. Okay. Do you think there's anything else operating here other than his stupidity? Um, I think he's mad because I'm, I, I, I'm smarter than him. Yeah. He was just there. Yeah. So, uh, you're standing at the fork in the road. Happiness highway is keeping your job. I think I bet, I guess. And, and misery Boulevard is, uh, getting fired so yeah, I, you want to keep the job do you want to keep your job i do i like my job i would like to be promoted yeah sure and what let me let me ask you this what kind of what kind of actions do they do they look at when they promote you to the managing director i think that was a word you used yes um am what, i what efficient pardon me that i have to be what? efficient efficient yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. um, okay what else i am detailed detail oriented detailed uh, so you're good at the task to be performed right yes i'm very good at the task okay but I can tell you, Ebony, that high percentage of the work of a director, and I don't know the company, but I can tell you that when you're a supervisor, a manager, or a director, a high percentage is working with people. Yeah, I don't like people. Yeah. Now, if you don't like them, is that going to help you get along with them better? Or is that going to prevent that? Um, it's probably been preventing it. I try, yeah. but I don't really like them. Do you think, that, yeah. Well, you're standing at this fork in the road and you're telling me what the misery boulevard is like. You want to go down the other road? Yeah, I want to go down the other road. Okay. okay. Now, if you were to take a step down that road of happiness, or we call it happiness or whatever you want to call it, but it's 
it's the road where you're getting along. And what would you be doing this afternoon when you go back to work? That's different than what you would have done if you had not come, come here today. Um, I would be sitting in another meeting, a boring meeting with stupid people and stupid ideas. Well, but yeah, but you'd be at a, is that what you'd be doing that's different? Um, yeah, because I try to avoid all the meetings. I always oh. schedule something to miss the meetings. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that going to get to where you want to go by skipping the meetings or? No, that's not what yeah. I need to do. Yeah. The, who calls the meeting? The boss? Yes. So, wow. So if you skip the meetings, that's not, what do you think? Is that going to help you or hurt you? Well, I guess it's been hurting me since I didn't get promoted. Um, yeah. 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 What do you think the boss wants from you that he's not getting? He used the word team player. Um, I interact with the clients well. I'm great with them, but yeah, yeah, I don't like the team. Yeah, he wants you to to work as as a better team member. You think you're able to do that or not? Um, I want to learn how to do it, but you know, most times people don't meet my expectations. Yeah. yeah. But you want to learn how to do it. That's a real positive strength that you have. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so what will you do differently when you go to this meeting this afternoon? Um, I'm going to go and try to look interested. Because okay. I don't look interested when I'm around the people. So I'm going to try to yeah. look interested. Okay. You're going to try. Are you going to do it or are you just going to try? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I guess I have to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm okay. going to do it. I mean, you don't have to, but I mean, if you want to. And you try yeah. and, and look interested. Is that going to help you or hurt you as far as being a team member? It's not really going to help. It's probably going to put me on the other highway. So. But by looking interested, it's not going to help? Yeah, because I'll be faking it. So I really, I'm not going to try. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be interested when I go to the meeting. Okay. Yeah, oh, I'm be wow. Interested. You're going beyond what I thought. So you're going to really be interested. Yeah, I want to get promoted. Yeah. I really want to get promoted. Yeah, yeah, and that's one way to do it. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I think so, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, I think you are telling me that. Now, I say that you can tell that to me, but there's somebody else that needs to hear that. But, and who is that? And I will oh. say this, the person's in this room. And it's not me. I, uh, okay. I am going to go to the meeting and be interested. Okay. And how will you, how will you illustrate? I mean, how will you, how would somebody know you're interested? If I were to sit there and be a fly on the wall, how would I know you're interested? Wow. You're really going to make me be interested. Um, <laughs> I would, I would have to listen and participate. Oh, two things, two things. Yeah. Listen and participate. Yeah. And how would you participate? I mean, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but you know, you, you don't seem to be a weak person. I think you can handle this. Um, well, if I don't look disinterested, 
and think that everybody's answers are stupid, then I can listen to what they have to say. And maybe they say something that's not stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when when uh, when you look around the room at the meeting, what kind of expression will you have on your face? Oh, oh that's going to be difficult. Um, I, I'm going to try to look maybe not stoic, just not like I'm disinterested. So maybe just a straight face. I'm going to try that, a straight face. What do you think about smiling? Oh, what if they <laughs> say something stupid? Well, I don't know. That's all the more reason to smile, isn't it? Oh, that's going to be so difficult. I mean, there's a okay. lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people in that room. Somebody's going to say something that's halfway decent, aren't they? And they're not all totally stupid, are they? Oh, you haven't met this team. They're stupid. Um, <laughs> okay, well, maybe they are, but but the point is, is smiling going to get you engaged with the with them? Is that going to help you on your career path, or is it going to hurt you? You know, now that you say that, I think smiling will make me look like I'm engaged and I want to. Yeah, yeah I them, like that. So. They yeah. engage, they're going to feel like you think that like, like you're interested in them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that's the happiness highway is getting connected with people. Yeah. Do you ever feel lonely? Do you ever feel lonely where you work? All the time. All the time, yeah. I wonder if this isn't going to help you feel less lonely by looking for something positive that your coworkers are doing and saying. I never thought about that. Well, because they go out, they 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 hang out with each other after work, and I don't ever go with them. So maybe I can. Really? So what if you did that? Wow, maybe I wouldn't. Um, maybe it would be easy to work on a project with them if I. Yeah. That's a lot of work to get to know people, but. You know, I you, can, if you tried that, Ebony, if you did that, you went out with them a couple times and it doesn't work, you can always go back to being miserable. In fact, wow. if it doesn't work, I will make you a guarantee. I will personally refund your misery. I don't want that. <laughs> I didn't think so. You don't want the misery. And I don't want to give it back to you because I it's just a kind of a saying I have about misery. But if you went down that road of going to that meeting, trying to be interested, asking the group where they're going to go after work and tagging along with them. I think there, this is going to help, but the thing is, do you, what do you think? You um, kind of said that already, but. I think it'll be different. It can't hurt. Oh yeah. You're out. I believe you're right. It can't hurt. I mean, I mean, maybe it could hurt, but it's probably not going to hurt. Yeah. So I would you be so. willing to do that? Would you be willing to do that? Yes. If they invite me, I'll go. Do I have to invite myself? Well, they may not invite you. Oh, you can't boy. control what they do. You can control what you do. Why don't you just ask them? This is why I'm by myself. It's so much easier. Um. Okay, so I have to go to the meeting, look interested, be interested, and ask them to go out with them. Oh, that's well, a lot of work. Can you handle all that? 
Okay. You did say I was a strong person. So yes, I can do it. Oh, okay, you can. Now, will you? Oh boy, I get no out with this. Um, okay. Yes. Do you feel, do I you will. feel sort of cornered? <laughs> uh well, I think that's a good thing. So I don't have an excuse because I like to use words to get out of stuff. So I don't have an excuse now. I have to okay. do it. All right. Well, this sounds pretty good. Well, our time's about up, Ebony, but there's just one more thing which I almost forgot. Um, could you call my office tonight? Uh, not too late, but just let me know how it went. And if I'm not there, I probably won't be there, but just leave a, a you know, like a 10 second message. Oh, you're really going to make sure I do all of this. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, in, in a way, you're going to make sure you do it. <laughs> but I, I'll i make sure. How about I just make sure 50% and you make sure 50%. Yeah, I got the 50% with all the work. But okay. I can do it. Okay. I can do all it. All right. What time will you call? Oh, wow. Now I have to have a time. Okay. I'm going to call at nine o'clock. That's when I'll call. Okay. And then I'll check my messages later, but um, just leave just this, you know, a, a 10 or 15 second message. You don't even have to use your name. It's okay. Okay. I'll do okay. it. Okay. Good. Well, I will wait for your message or I'll catch it and uh, we'll see how it goes. And then we'll meet again. I think we should meet a couple of times here. Oh, wow. I need a lot of help. Okay. Well, okay. That's, that's what we do here. We help people figure out how to live a better life, a happier life, a life where they're connected with their friends or their potential friends. Okay. The okay. happiness highway. All right. Happiness highway. All right, Ebony. Good talking to you. Thank you. Okay, you bet. Bye now. Bye. There's lots of All applause right. that you can't see. <laughs> but what was that? I said there's a lot of applause that you're not able to see. Over people Whoa. love that. There are there is a question um, with a follow up. <clears throat> good, good. Okay. What well, what was your reasoning to ask her if she was lonely? And then the follow up to that is. Would that have been a good place to explore her past of maybe having this problem often, not just at her place of employment? Yeah, in so many directions. See, that's a good question. Uh, there's so many directions and, and things I did not do, that's for sure. But uh, that, that issue may be the most prominent issue. But I think the way you handle that loneliness, if, so let's say she, she is lonely, let's say that. Um, uh, the way you handle it is by doing something and helping her make a decision if that's what she wants. And the way I do it is I always use that fork in the road. That's a really good metaphor. You're standing at the fork in the road. And my suggestion is keep it simple. Two roads, happiness and misery. And, and uh, uh, the good relationships are on the happiness highway. And, and um, so, uh, yeah, and, and I think the loneliness will become less when she gets connected with people. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, this was, I would say, this seems to be a kind of a coaching session more than counseling, but I'm a counselor, so I can do, co and I'm also a qualified coach, so I, I, I encourage you to get that credential too someday that um, you can do that. But there is a difference, and I don't want to get into all the differences, but but um, if you're going to get into the loneliness and and so on, I, I would I'd stress the presence. I'd stress the presence. I could ask her, has this been a long range problem? If she said, yes, I've always been lonely. And I'd say, OK, you want to continue down that road or you want to, you know, want to go down a different road? If you want to go down a different road, I I can help you, but I can't help you go down that other road because you're already on it, and that's causing you pain. And my job is to help you feel less pain. 
So, uh, okay, any other questions? Just or a lot of positive. Yeah, positive feedback. Everyone loved the the metaphor, the happiness highway, and that. Um, there was a lot of feedback on that. There was a comment that I was writing the questions and reflections as a school counselor would use it with a student. So yeah. Well, this would be very, very useful with the students. Uh, and, and teach them that. My, my suggestion is teach the teachers to teach the kids two roads in life, you know? You can, and, and, and they'll find out there's distinctions that you can make, but keep it simple because it helps them feel a sense of control. You know, I can go down this road and it's gonna, my life's gonna be better. Or I can go down this road, my life's gonna be miserable. Maybe I'll feel good for the moment, but if you take the wrong pill that some kid gave you, you're, you might end up dead. And that's a fact. I don't mean you scare the kids, but but you you know this thing about fentanyl. They just got a, a they just got a couple hundred thousand pills the other day, and they said that's enough to kill everybody in the United States. Think of that. That's how dangerous that crap is. And so. Um, <clears throat> I think we got a lot of counseling to do to help people go down a better road than the than the drug road. Okay, any other questions or disagreements? Okay. People are just resonating a lot with the action steps and how it's very um, solution focused very actionable. Yeah, yeah. Well, some people say this is similar to to um, solution focused and I think it is. Uh, I always say this, I can't find any references to solution focused before the 1980s. <laughs> Although I don't wanna get into a big argument about what came first. I say, take what's useful, incorporate it, incorporate other things if you want to use the magic wand or if you were to wake up tomorrow and everything would be perfect yeah that's fine um, that fits with reality therapy if you want to do that i usually don't do it because i don't think of it but but it's a good thing to do there you can are teach them. Oh, I'm sorry, go See, ahead. we got we got a, we got a formulation that you can teach them Teach them the WDEP. And I didn't do it tonight with Ebony because, you know, I want to demonstrate something else. But, but you could you could uh, teach, and maybe the next time I talk to her, I'd say, you know, remember we talked about your wants, and then we talked about your actions, and then we I asked you some key questions, Ebony. Is this helping or is this hurting? And and then we made a plan, and you put those together. It, it spells WDEP which is, sounds like a radio station. And WDEP, I'll tell you what it means now. Uh, my wife is gonna come over and tell you another meaning, but it means once doing evaluation and planning. Now she's gonna tell you another meaning for WDEP. Well, it helps you remember. It means women do everything perfectly. I can hear them clapping. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I have another, my wife and I have a lot of fun making up uh, w w what that acronym means. And I say, well, whining does eventually pay off. And then also William, Glasser, William does everything perfect. And William deserves extraordinary praise. How's that? Um, so anyway, uh, the idea is to have some fun with this, with, with your job, have some fun counseling. My suggestion to you, I got a lot of suggestions. <laughs> um, my suggestion to you is, is if you can, can control your own schedule, schedule in somebody that's easy during the day. Don't just schedule in all these you know, the, the, the chainsaw massacres, one after another, schedule in somebody that's easy or somebody you like a little bit more than the, than the other people. You can't like everybody, but you still, 
can 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 kind of love them. You can and you can help them. I mean, you don't have to feel warm and fuzzy toward everybody. It's nice if you do that. Some people can do that, but but um, I'd say you have needs and you have needs for success and for being in control of your life. So scheduling somebody that's easy to work with. Now, I'm not saying avoid the problems. Of course, I'm not saying that. <clears throat> And then you don't always have control over your schedule. You, you, you just deal with whatever walks through that door. And sometimes it's tough and sometimes it's not so tough. Sometimes it seems not so tough, but when you talk a little bit more, you find out it's really tough. Well, anyway, any other observations or questions? There are some a... additional questions. Yeah, yeah, sure. The first one specific um, to the demo kind of, if this wasn't a demo, would you have slowed that process down? Oh, that's a good question. One thing about a role play is you can speed it up a little bit because, um, you know, you don't have to worry about the timing. And sometimes you'd say things, I would say something where that's because I'm trying to teach it and it may not be, it may be too soon in the, in the counseling process. So this might've taken a little bit longer, but I don't think it would take much longer because she was very open to, to everything I said. And she gave, when I'd ask a question, she was very cooperative about it. It wasn't really a, a difficult session. It was pretty easy in fact. And um, so and there's a lot of things you could get into. I mean, which I, I didn't, but, you can't get into everything. Okay. I mean, why you. is that guy? Why is the boss saying? Why is the boss coming down on her so hard? I mean, God only knows why. Maybe he doesn't like women. Maybe there's a racial difference. Maybe there's all kind of stuff going on. And but we, I tried to help her make some plans to deal with the world around her as it is, not as I'd like it to be. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so uh, there's two that kind of go with each other. The first one is, do you feel this is a good therapy for someone with personality disorders? And in addition to that, are there certain diagnoses you can't use reality therapy for? Yeah, that's, that, that, that's a, this is going to sound like, like, um, it just, it's going to, it may sound like I'm overstating it. <clears throat> But I think you can use it with just about anybody. Now that doesn't mean you can solve everybody's problems, but I, I'm, I'm saying it applies to everybody. But uh, so there's a distinction there. I can't think of any diagnoses where you would not use it uh, with the person who is completely psychotic and out of touch with reality they're not usually completely out of touch. There's a little bit of sanity in there somewhere and talk to that part of it. Let me give you an example of that. Years ago, a book was written called, What Are You Doing? How People Are Helped in Reality Therapy. Lasser's first wife, Naomi, who died a long time ago. By the way, after that, he, he married my wife's best friend, Arlene, who was here from Cincinnati where I live. And now they're, well now, they were living in Los Angeles together. He died on, on uh, August 23rd, 2013. But anyway, um, what was the question? <laughs> Anybody that you cannot use it with um, or any diagnosis. And I'll tell you this, it started in a mental hospital in a correctional institution where you have very difficult clients with a lot of diagnoses. But the one I wanna to allude to is a chapter in that book that I mentioned, and the chapter is called Coming Out of the Corner. It's written by a man named Bill Tollefson. He was a young guy with one workshop training in reality therapy, one three or four day workshop. That's all he had. And he worked in this mental hospital. And so there was a guy there who was, everybody avoided him. Nobody wanted to talk to him because of the following reasons. He would sit in a corner and he cursed anybody that walked by. He would urinate in his, own, in his own mouth, play in his feces. And I mean, he was a kind of a disgusting character, wouldn't you say? Well, he was a character. But the disgustingness was his behavior, his best behavior he had available. And Bill would talk to him. Bill would just walk by 
and be and, and be courteous to him and he would talk to him using reality therapy and it took six months but the guy was finally able to come out of the corner and go into bill's office and have a somewhat sensible conversation and it never he never got out and you know ran for political office or anything although <laughs> maybe he could but but um, uh, he never, you know, became president of a, a Ford Motor Company or anything like that. But but he was a, a lot more reasonable than he had been. That's what I'm saying. So improvement, dramatic improvement. So he could use it with that person. If if, if there's anybody, whatever that guy's diagnosis was, I don't know. But but um, there would be a guy I'd find it a little hard to use reality therapy with. But um, I think you can use it with everybody, but you have to adapt it to the person, even even kids. You know, uh, you don't say to the whatever age, what's your plan? You say, here's a plan. Put your toys in the toy box. That helps. Leave the toys all over the driveway. That hurts. So you have to kind of teach them directively what helps and what hurts. So you, it's, it's developmentally accurate. I mean, I usable and uh, but but you maybe maybe there is some diagnosis. I, if I look through this big book of last are called the DSM, the big book of unhappiness. Okay, I'm looking through it now. Let's see. PS PTSD, we got panic attacks. You can use it with any of those. That was a DSM that just fell on the floor. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I think that is everything. And we are right at 9.30 Eastern time. So that's a good okay. good ending spot. Um, we appreciate you so much uh, for being here. I wish it was via camera, but I'm Thank you for, for being with us, even through technical difficulties. Okay. Well, sometime we can do it again with the camera. That would be amazing. I'm sure everyone, there's a lot of happy faces, and I'm sure everyone would be very happy to have you back with us. Okay, good. How many people showed up? Um, I think we had 106. It was at oh. 108 when I looked. 108. So we had... Mm -hmm. A good, a yeah, good showing, um, and people really liked the role play. Um, so that would be mm -hmm. wonderful. If we okay, could have... great. Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Yes. So bye, that. Uh, bye, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah, that brings us to the end of our events. Um, we appreciate everyone for being here and taking the time out of your schedule to join us. There is a brief follow-up survey that's gonna pop on your screen. It's just to advise us on future theories, events, what you guys wanna see so we can cater the events to you. So please fill that out. And thank you, Dr. Webelding and everyone for joining us this evening and be back for our next ones. We're gonna do this every quarter. So we hope to see everybody back. Good night, everybody.